YouTube, my name is Dan and I am the Friendly Fat Guy. I am here to talk a little bit about um, being grateful and thankfulness. We're coming up on Thanksgiving and, and getting into the holidays, which in general for folks like me can be kind of a pretty rough time of year. Um, you know, those with mental illness struggle extra because the things that hit most people hard can hit extra hard uh, for folks that struggle with depression or, you know, even with spectrum disorder, just being kind of um, out on your own not part of the group, not part of everyday normal people, as you would call it, which I hate that word, normal. What's normal, right? Um, but, you know, just being a part of the world on equal footing um, gives you a little bit of a security blanket, whether you realize it or not. And when uh, you're not part of that group, you, you feel it. You know, you definitely feel it. So what I want to do is I'm going to go through a couple of different things, um, some <laughs> things about, uh, you know, what I am grateful and thankful for. Uh, there are things that, uh, you know, I, I think that being grateful and having gratitude for things, being thankful, you have to break it up. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. And there are three things that I would mention. Um, there are people, there are places, there are things, and then I guess there are abstracts too, so we'll say four. Um, things that, you know, you don't always want to put everything in one basket. If you, everything that you are and are thankful for, if all of your gratitude's going to one place, say, uh, people, but then some sort of catastrophe happens and you're out on your own and you can't get to those people. You don't want everything that you're grateful for in the world to go away. Um, now, granted, people are an important part of mine. There are some people who have stuck with me who are really important to me. Um, like my friend Lindsay, for example, who has been a good friend of mine since high school. Her and I haven't talked a lot recently, but she's like a sister to me. And, you know, but, you know, when we haven't talked, I don't want to put myself in a position where, oh, crap, this one person or this p particular thing was all that I was grateful for. And, you know, like, yeah, she's a good friend of mine. I care a lot. Like I said, she's like a little sister. But, you know, just because I haven't talked to her in a while doesn't make it the end of the world, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a couple of things. Places, first off. <laughs> I am very thankful for specific places. I know that sounds stupid. I am grateful for um, West Virginia, which is where a lot of my uh, dad's family is from. It is, uh, I tell you what, if you've never been there, it is some of the most beautiful country in the world. You get up there in the mountains and it'll absolutely take your breath away. Um, there is something about laying out on the grass on a starry night in West Virginia up on a mountaintop. I swear there are more stars <laughs> there than there are in other states. It's, it's, it's nuts. It's beautiful. Um, I'm also thankful for my mom's house actually. And, uh, you know, my mom and I moved to that house after my sister graduated high school and moved away. My dad had been passed away for many years. I mean, it's a really nice house. It's built really well. It's it's big. We remember uh, passing by when they were first building the houses right there with it and saying, wow, those are nice. We'll never be able to afford that. And then my mom was able to buy it. It's really cool. She still lives there now. And uh, I'm very you know, I'm very grateful for that. Grateful for uh, my house that my fiance and I live in together. Uh, she got a really great price on it before we got together. So it was her house, I guess. But, you know, it's our home. Uh, but, you know, so we have a really low payment, which I'm very grateful for. But it's it's a nice house, pretty yard, nice neighborhood, friendly people live next door. Um, Bob, talking about you. Uh, you know, so it's cool. It's a good place. Um, you know, even, you know, cities in general, Charleston, South Carolina, I'm a fan of. My sister and brother-in-law met there. It's a very special place for me, and I feel at peace and at home when I'm in that city, and I can smell the, uh, smell the ocean. As long as I don't smell the, uh, paper mill before I smell the ocean, I'm good. <laughs> um, but then, you know, also things. I am grateful for my car, as I've said. It's like a little security blanket for me. I love my little car. Grateful for my phone. Um, you know, my phone allows me to interact with the world. Um, I try to not use it um, as my only interaction for the world. I like to interact also other ways, but it allows me to record videos in the car and do other fun stuff like that, play games, play Pokemon with my fiance because she loves to run around and catch creatures on her phone. Um, you know, 
I'm grateful for my tuba of all things. My, uh, you know, I, I'm a musician and I play brass instruments and my tuba, um, we found a little hole in the wall music store in Atlanta after I had, uh, moved down there. Costs like 50 bucks. It's an old, uh, antique professional tuba. Absolutely love the thing. It looks like a piece of crap. Looks like somebody ran over it and they possibly did, but it sounds great and I'm very thankful for it. Um, you know, um, also, you know, I will go in, I, I have a list of people, you know, and again, the reason I'm going through all of this is that it's important for us to be able to check in with this stuff. Um, you know, it's also nice for the people and things that are important to you to be able to, to hear and listen and watch the video, but uh, I'm wanting to get this out there in the hopes that other people will look at it and say, well, if he can do that, then I can do it. Um, so I've got a list of people just so that I don't miss anybody forgive me. Um, now, not everybody that I'm grateful for is on this list. Obviously, I'm grateful for so many people, so many people at work, so many people I've gone to school with, so many uh, family members. These are just a few, kind of a sampling, I guess. But if you're not mentioned here, it doesn't mean that I don't love you or care about you or that you're not important to me. There are lots of you that are. This is just a small sampling. Um, okay, so I apologize for looking away. I'm checking my list here. Um, okay. My first person on my list is my fiance. I'm not going to list her by name because she, uh, made it very clear when we first started this whole shindig that she'll go with me places and do stuff like that, but she doesn't want to be, you know, on the internet and that kind of thing. So I'll respect that. But, uh, my fiance, I have been crazy about since I was 18 years old and I'm 33 no, yeah, thir 33, yeah, <laughs> 33, um, you know, it, it, we've known each other a long time, we've been together for about three years now, um, it is the best thing that's ever happened to me, um, I told somebody today, as a matter of fact, I said, yes, I think she's the most beautiful woman that ever walked the planet, she is just as beautiful now, or even more so than she was the day I met her, but the real beauty of it is I can sit and talk to her for days on end with my eyes closed, and, you know, just being with the soul that is in this person makes me know that, that that there's good in the world and it makes me happy so you know even if she wasn't the hottest girl in the world which she is so oh yeah uh <laughs> you know she still would be perfect um because she is her and you know I get along with her so well and we just make each other happy and smile and I've never met anybody that I could talk to like her always been that way and so I'm very grateful for that um okay next one um my dad's somebody I've talked about quite a bit um I haven't really gone into details about my dad but just to say quickly he did pass away when I was a kid but um I'm very grateful for the fact that when he was around despite all the issues he had and man did he have some issues um <laughs> man did he have some issues but despite the issues that he had he always made it very clear what his priorities were and how important me and my sister were to him and, uh, you know, if there's one thing that I always will take away from that is my dad loved me. He really did. I was special to him. And, uh, you know, and no matter what, he always made it a priority to let that know. And I'm very appreciative of that. Okay, next one is my mom. <laughs> my mom is a little out there, as most of you guys could probably guess. Um, but I love her to death. Um, I can say things about my mom that you cannot. <laughs> um, you know, so that like, what do you say about my mama? Kind of thing. Um, my mom is a very strong woman. She went back to school after my dad died at the age of uh, 43. Went back and got a uh, bachelor's degree and a master's degree. And she makes people's lives better on a daily basis very proud of my mom. Um, we don't always see eye to eye. She's not always my favorite person, but, um, at the end of the day, my mom is someone I'm very proud of. And very thankful to have in my life. Um, yes, uh, my nephews, which I know I talk about them a decent amount. One is 16. One is almost 14. I'm not going to list them by name, um, but I have the two of them. They're my sister's boys. I have been around for them since they were teeny tiny. They're my buddies. We have a very good time, and uh, it helps me stay young for sure to be able to do stuff with them, but they have uh, been through some ups and downs. They've seen the friendly fat guy lows and the friendly fat guy highs, and they uh, have grown up with me, and uh, you know, when everything else in the world seems wrong, can always hang out with my buddies for a while and everything just seems right again. Um, 
you know, they love me for the crazy nutball that I am and we have a good time and uh do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um and yeah, so <laughs> You know, I, I've always been good with kids in general, but my nephews are just the epitome of that. They're awesome boys. I'm very proud of both of them. Um, the uh, I'm going to be doing a little video about one of my coping skills that relates to music here in a few weeks. And uh, you will get to know a little bit more about one of my nephews because a silly thing that I did pertaining to that coping skill is uh, involving him a few years ago. <laughs> um, okay. Um, my... Uh, my sister. Yes, I'll list that. I have one sister and one basically is a sister, but not, you know, blood related. But my sister, sister and I have been through a whole lot. We bicker and argue from time to time, but we're very close. We have a uh, similar interests that differentiate at cool places. And I'm very glad to have her around. Um, again, we don't always see eye to eye. We're not always each other's favorite person, but I'm very glad to have my sister. We've been through hell and back together when we were kids. And, um, you know, it's cool to have somebody that knows you that well. And, uh, you know, even though we were seven years apart, we were always very close and uh, still are, you know, as kids and then as adults. So it's, it's pretty cool. I'm very lucky there. Um, yes. Next after that, I have my, uh, my brother-in-law who is her husband, who's been around since I was about eh, 12 ish, something like that, 12, 13. Um, Anyway, it, it is funny that I was taller than him when we met, <laughs> even though he was, you know, of course, a good bit older. But he's been around since I was a little kid, since truthfully, you know, within four or five years after my dad died. And uh, he's been a big influence for me. And of all the people that I know in this world, he's probably the most zen and the most chill. And, uh, you know, he can go with the flow of just about anything. And so I'm very appreciative of that perspective, especially given how high-strung a lot of other people in my family are. It's very nice to have that counterbalance. Um, I got two people who I'm going to mention by first name, two friends of mine I'm going to throw in there. Um, my brother from another mother, Kyle, um, he and I have been through a lot. We played in bands together in high school and after, done a lot of cool stuff together. Um, one of the best people I know, best drummers I know, best musicians, and just absolutely one of the best souls of any person that I know would give you the shirt off his back, but always takes care of the people he cares about and other people too. He is the first person to hold the door for somebody, the first person to pull the chair out. This the first person to always be there is this guy. And uh, not only that, he's just a cool dude to hang out with. Um, he's misunderstood. He had long hair for a long time because, duh, he's a drummer. Um, but I tell you what, man, underneath those long locks of gold is, is the head of a, uh, a philosopher, a deep thinker, and a great guy. <clears throat> and the last person I have on here, um, as far as my list of people goes, and again, this is not exclusive, this is just some folks to give you an example, is my good buddy Steve. Uh, Steve and I do some work together. He is a brilliant designer and marketer. Uh, we do t-shirts and imprintables and that kind of stuff together. Um, Steve is much like my brother-in-law where he is just chill, man. He is always chill, but he is driven as all get out. When I need inspiration to keep going, when I need inspiration to make another video or to keep the, you know, keep the cameras rolling. When I need inspiration to do something big, all I have to do is look at this cat. Um, cause when, you know, with, with Steve, as he would say, everything's always wavy. It's always, always wavy and it's all good. <laughs> so I'm very appreciative of that. Steve and I have known each other for, you know, maybe three years now. Um, absolutely one of the best people I've ever met. I'm very glad to have him, uh, as a friend. He actually has agreed he's going to officiate our wedding. He even, um, which uh, we'll have to see how that goes. He's not a preacher or anything, but he's going to do the ordain, you know, the, for weddings thing. And uh, it's just cool. Just one heck of a guy. Um, if he is probably the, uh, the, the, if there is another friendly fat guy in the world, it would be this cat right here. Um, all right. And then the existential is, is the last part. The existential is the stuff that I don't care. Nobody can take away from you. Right. Um, you know, some of it is under your control. Some of it's not like the first one I would say is I'm grateful for my body. I'm a big guy. Yes. Um, but despite that, man, my body is held up like a champ. Um, I have lost weight, gained weight, lost weight and gained weight. I've lost weight and gained weight so much that it'd make Oprah spin. Um, it's, it's nuts, right? But my body is held, held on with me. 
When it's time to run, it runs. When it's time to play, it plays. Um, you know, all despite being a big giant guy, and I'm a big giant guy, my blood pressure is always good. My cholesterol is always good. Everything on the inside always is working right, and I am so grateful for that. You know, so people talk about their health, but hey, 33 and a big giant. You know, it. I am very grateful for my body, my very good body. It's doing very well, and hopefully over this next year, I'll continue to be losing some weight and stuff like that, so it doesn't have to work as hard. But I'm very grateful for it. Um, but other existential stuff, your creativity. You know, you never lose your creativity. It doesn't matter what. You know, I have seen people who are homeless who keep themselves entertained by people watching and putting words in other people's mouths that they're seeing in traffic. It's crazy. But you don't lose that. You don't lose your creativity. No matter what happens, you've always got it. Your spirit, the, the person you are on the inside, the good person that all of you are, is always there. You always have that. And I'm thankful for that for me. You know, your ability to reach out and connect to another human being is something you will always have. Now, for some of us, it's harder. I will fully admit it's harder. If you are on the spectrum, uh, you know, you have a really hard time with that. But you always can reach another human being no matter what you do. You might be able to do it without words at all. You know, it could be as simple as somebody falls in the grocery store and you put a hand down to help them back up. You can make a difference in somebody else's life. I'm grateful for the ability to do that. I sat down with an activity and an activity at work today and had to write five things I was grateful for. And one of them was the ability to make a difference for other people. That's important to me man. And that should be important for every single person. I don't care who you are. I don't care what color you are. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care if you're, you know, a guy, girl, transgendered, um, you know, gay, straight. I I don't care. None of that matters. It, it doesn't matter whether you're on the spectrum, whether you have depression. It doesn't matter whether you're a regular old person who doesn't have anything wrong with them except for the problems that you have, which are, of course, just as important. None of that matters. All that matters is that we, you know, that we can make a difference in the world, big or small, we can still make a difference. And that's something that nobody ever can take away from you. And that's something that you always should be grateful for. The minute we can stop making a difference in the world is the minute we stop growing, the minute we stop loving and caring, and that's the minute we start dying. And that's, that is that is no bueno, man, no good. All right, so I know this has kind of been rambly, and I hope you guys take it for what it is. It's just my list of things that I'm grateful for, and I challenge you to get out there and make your own. I'll see what I can do about putting together a... Um, like, like a little worksheet paper type of thing. Maybe you can do it with kids and, or whatever um, that I will put up on FriendlyFatGuy.com and I will put a link in the description as soon as I get that up there. So I'll make sure to do that. Um, please, if you haven't, go check out the new FriendlyFatGuy.com. It's very cool. Lots of crazy stuff. Still adding stuff every day, of course, but please go check it out. Check out our other videos. Um, one quick, quick thing to say. Um, a family member of mine... Uh, last week passed away from a suicide attempt and I just want to take a moment I'm not going to go into any details besides the fact that there's a wonderful guy that just had a lot of pain and it was really down on his luck and I want to tell every single one of you out there um, you know besides the fact that yes I'm of course grateful for all of my people that watch my channel all of you out there if you are feeling down if you are feeling like that especially during the holidays it happens people it happens don't let it sneak up on you if you're feeling that way reach out for help the resources are there at the end of this video and down in the description i will put the phone number for the national suicide crisis prevention line all you have to do is call there are trained professionals on the other end that will talk to you and help you through it and don't ever hesitate to reach out to the people that care about you. If you're somebody that knows me personally, reach out to me. Please reach out to me. I am here for my people. Like, I... 
want to be here for you all. You know, I am thankful for you all and I will do everything I can to take care of the people that are out there. Even if you don't know me personally, if you just found me on YouTube or you think, hey, you know, cool, big fat guy, <laughs> whatever. If you're in that place, write to me on friendlyfatguy.com. There's on the very front page, there's a contact box. Write to me, you know, and start a conversation. Reach out to another person. And that's the first step to being able to get yourself through something like that. Because the last thing we need is for somebody else to walk down that path and to be lost to us. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for bearing with me. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And if I don't post before then have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. This is Dan the Friendly Fat Guy signing off. <laughs>